All right, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahavakar Kwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahweh Shai, who we reverence and honor. Honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that teach us truth well and that continue to teach us truth well and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few brothers and sisters listening, listening and learning. Okay, and I want to say to Wadi Yahabai Shum, Yahabashai, for allowing me with another day to get out here and to teach this word. Okay, because all things are possible with you have a shy. And so lucky if my voice is a bit croaky. Okay, but Lord willing, this will be edifying and we can feed the hopeful elect with this word. So I want to start on David's I want to start on Baruch Baba Kasha. This is Baruch 4 and 18. For he that brought these plagues upon you shall deliver you. So who brought the, pl the plagues of destruction and captivity upon us? It was Yahavashai. And he said he would deliver us from the same. Upon you would deliver you from the hands of your enemies. So that's another prayer, to be delivered from the hands of our enemy, from the hands of our adversaries, from the hands of these other nations. Go your way, O oh my children. Go your way, for I am desolate. Wasn't Israel desolate once we were not in there? It was laden, other what tribes went in there? The Babylonians, the Assyrians, even the Greeks, even the Romans. So our land, it was laid desolate. I've put off the clothing of peace and put on me the sackcloth of my prayer. So this is sackcloth, it's not buying fancy garments. It's sackcloth. God, these are garments of mourning. That's what sackcloth is for. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. So right now we're praying. We're back in remembrance and we're crying to the everlasting Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. We're crying out to him that he's going to deliver us from any situation. And that's what you're going to believe. Because Yahweh Shai, his name in itself is what he delivers. So Yahweh Shai would need to put us in particular situations where we'd be delivered. And that's what's so great about this. Because if there was no enemy, then what would you need to be delivered from? If there was no trouble, what would you need to be delivered from? If there, if there was no adverse adversity, what would you need to be delivered from? Uh. So rarely is Yahweh Shai driving on the wrong side of the road. Rarely is Yahweh Shai that causes, that sets up our adversaries. So what? He can show what? His power. This is the Lord Yahweh Shai's movie. Okay. And it says, Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Lord, which we're doing now. We're crying unto Yahweh Shai. And he shall deliver you from the power of the hand of their enemies. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to deliver us from the power of the hand of our enemies. Those that may seem too strong for you. Esau, Edom, the banking elites, and those of the other nations. Yahusha said he was going to deliver us from our enemies. We were us crying unto him. For my hope is in the everlasting. So our hope, bear me just a minute. I want to, you know what, let's slow it down. Who are our enemies? One thing at a time. Who are our enemies according to the scriptures? 
go to Psalms 80, I believe it's 83. This is Psalms 83. It shows you who our enemies are. Psalms 83. Keep not silence. We're not supposed to keep silence. We are not supposed to keep silence. Oh, you have a shy. Okay, just speaking of the most high, keep not silence. We want him to what? Plead our cause. Hold not thy peace. So we don't want you Abishai to hold his peace. And be not still, O Most High. For lo, thy enemies make atonement. Which is what? A noise. Okay. A kerfuffle. A disturbance. And they that hate thee have lifted up thy head. So our enemies that hate thee, they've lifted up their head in what? In pride. When you lift up your head, that's a sign of pride. And that's what our enemies have done. Verse 3. We have taken cross the council against thy people. So that cross the council, what does it mean? Artful. Sly, sneaky. So that's what they've done. They've done these councils, they've taken these councils against our people. How they can further entrap us. And this is spiritual because what the latest, what do you have? Latest you've had yesterday, what? All the meetings. The UN meetings, where they discuss matters about the vaccines and the world's future events. So that's them getting together. That's all the nations coming together. And it's not just about ruling the other nations is more so about having dominion over Israel because Esau he wants that birthright back but he ain't going to get it back just go to bear me just a minute we have taken crafty counsel against thy people so it's crafty counsel secret counsel against the Israelites they have consulted against our hidden ones. So what does consult mean? Well, they're consulting with what? Satan, the spiritual demon Satan. They're consulting with each other, all against the children of Israel. How can we keep them down? How, we can, how can we keep them blind? But guess what? The hopeful elect, they're waking up. The ones that are meant to be blinded and stay blinded, they're gonna remain in that state. The ones that are meant to get this truth, they're going to get it. And they're going to be what? Of quick understanding. In the fear of the Lord also. And they shall not judge by what? The flesh. And the hidden ones are the Israelites. We are known as the hidden ones. More so the elect. They're hidden. We're not so much out there. Okay. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. So they tried to completely cut us off. And this was during what the transatlantic slave trade. They divided up our nation. It tells you that in Joel 3. They cast what? Lots for a boy and get sold a girl for a, a, a bottle of wine and some mustard guns. They divide, they parted our land. And cut them off from being a nation. So that's real hate. They tried to completely cut us off. Completely tried to separate us from our power. But the name of Israel may be no more. So they actually tried to do the away with our name. Our name, our heritage. This is what happened. So it's a blessing that we've woken up to who we are. But the name of Israel may be no more. So that was their agenda. And it's still their agenda. It's still on their list to cut us off. But you're not going to be able to do that. The undesirables, you're going to be able to cut them off on this side. And what's the one of the major ways Esau wants to cut you off? By the RFID chip. Okay. 
and that's spiritual. So I'm looking at abundances from the past into the present for the future. Okay? And we speak of what? Past things and we speak of the things that are present, the things now, and we're speaking of the things in the future. That's what a prophet's supposed to do. Warn you of the times that are about to come. When I've consulted together with one consent, okay, with one reasoning, okay? They are confederate against thee. So they've all joined up, confederate, okay? The tabernacles of Edom, the tabernacles is the dwelling place, and it says of Edom. And of Ishmaelites, Edom is what Esau and the Ishmaelites and niggas and Moab, okay, the Gooks, okay, and the Hagarines, Gabal, Ammon, Amalek, which is the head tribe of Esau, and the Philistines and the inhabitants of Tyre, Asha is also joined with them. So all these nations, they all come together to try and cast down the children of Israel, try and keep them in a low estate. They have hoping the children of Lot. So they've all came together. And that's their agenda today. That's why you see, you have that big UN meeting. All right? That's why you see, that's why you have that UN meeting. So they all get together and discuss matters how things should go, how they want things to go, how they want their legislation. All these are traps. These are agendas. So about what Salakia. So we're back on the route. Four and twenty-one. We have good cheer, all my children. Prayers of Lord, we have to try as Yahweh Prayer, fasting. Making them supplication. And he shall deliver you from the power of the hand of your enemies. So Yahweh Shai is able to do that. Through prayer, through belief. And he is going to do it. Even if you believe or not. Scripture says, so what if some did not believe? Romans 3 and 3. Shall I make the faith for the most high without effect? So whether you believe you're going to be saved or not, it's going to happen. The elect are going to be saved from the destruction to come. From their missiles, from martial law. They're going to be in the, the hour of Jacob's trouble, but they're going to be saved. They're going to be protected. And that's what we believe. You have to have that confidence. Don't worry about the rest of the unbelief. The scripture says, Fear not the incredulity of them that trouble thee. And those that don't believe. You're going to get more that don't believe than more than, than believe, Salakia. You're going to have more that don't believe than more that actually believe. Because that's what type of world we're living in. We're living in an unfaithful world. Okay? Where nobody has any type of faith. And you've got to believe whoever comes up against you, the weight of the elect, Yahweh is just going to destroy them. Okay, because there's a lot of things going on. Okay, a lot of things are going on. The main circumspect. A lot of agents up in camp, spies, men messing with your videos in other camps. But I guess what? The Lord set them up to do that. This is good. Set against evil. The Lord sees everything everything that's going on the Lord knows your thoughts the Lord knows your intent your wicked intent or whether it's righteous okay but that's beautiful because guess what when Esau and his minions and Satan messes with us that shows guess what you're doing something effective when he's messing with your videos you're doing something effective because he don't want this word to get out even the scriptures the demons fear and tremble so even the demons that are in men, they're faring and trembling. 
That's why a lot of people, when they come up here, most of them, they feel uncomfortable. Because the word, what does it do? It cuts, but it's supposed to cut you to repentance. It's not supposed to cut you to the point where you don't want to come towards the light. But the scripture says that men love darkness rather than light. That a deed shall not be reproved. So they'd rather, people would rather stay in the darkness. They'd rather stay in a dark room. Because they're uncomfortable with the scriptures. Anyway, let's stay on topic. But you brothers out there that are laboring that are sincere, stay circumspect. Remain circumspect of your surroundings and even men that are around you. Apostle Arimna done a very, very, very edifying video with very edifying points. <laughs> Certain men that have what? Crept in unaware. And it's too late, they're already in here, they're already in the camp. But it's for you to make that distinction. Just because a man says Shalawam, we're gonna to get back to the topic, but just because a man says Shalawam, don't take a man's word for that, just because he says Shalawam. Even just because he calls on the name, the script says, try the spirits by the spirits. You know what, I'm going into a different topic now, it's like I have to flow with the spirit. The scripture says, try the spirits by the spirits. There's many anti mashiachs many. There are many. There's many that are against the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Many. Right? Let's go to John. Flow with the spirit. Don't force it, flow with it. Because I want to go somewhere else, but the spirit's telling me to touch on this topic. Okay? There's men that come up here, that were sent here to spy you out. Okay? To spy out your liberty, to spy out our liberty that we have in Yahweh Shai. Bear me just a minute. This is John. Two. And let's start at. There's a lot of meat, there's a lot of meat here. And let's start at 18. Little children. Okay. It is the last time. We're in the last days, the last days, the last days. And as you have heard that the anti mashiach the Antichrist, Antichrist is anti mashiach and there's many. Shall come even now there are many anti mashiach So guess what? If you're against the will of Yahweh Shai, you're anti mashiach If you're against, if you're against his will, you're against his servants, you're against Yahweh Shai. There's many. Even now there are many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. So there's many. So if a man's not ready calling upon the name of Yahweh Shai, that's an antichrist. If a man's go if a man's still in the churches, that's an antichrist. If a man worships anything outside of the truth, that's an antichrist. Okay? Anything that's opposed in Yahweh Shai, especially if you're teaching another doctrine. If you're teaching another doctrine that's not been taught to you by the elder apostles of Great Millstone, guess what? You're anti mashiach And that's just the truth. And there's many perpetrating a fraud. Okay? And it says, they went out from us. So you had men, they left, they broke off from Great Millstone. Okay? Or from whatever camp, but they were not of us. Why? It's going to tell you why. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt have continued with us. So, if you break off from Great Millstone, the elder apostles, I believe they have the 100% truth. That's why I follow their teaching. Really, it's the Shai's teaching that he bestowed upon Abba Bibbins, King Marshall, that was bestowed upon the elder apostles. So I believe the elder apostles of Great Millstone, they have 100% truth. So I'm going to follow that truth. Even if I'm not a part of them, even if I'm not in the camp, that's called having integrity. A lot of men, they break off from the group and they start changing up the doctrine. 
Why? Because of the of offence they had. So guess what's going to happen to individuals like that? They're going to be destroyed. But if they had been of us, they would have no doubt have continued with us. So you would have continued. What does it mean, continue with us? In the doctrine. In the doctrine that you've been taught. You continue. Brak ti awa, brak ti awa shay. You would continue in the doctrine you were taught. That was passed down. You don't change it because you're hurt, you're upset. You don't change the 12 tribes chart and say, whoa, it's all Negroes. No, because that's just going to lead to what you have to mind. So the moment you change the doctrine, you're in the ways of death. You're in the paths of death. Lest you repent. Okay? There's only one doctrine. All right? And that's the doctrine of Yahushai. Which was passed down by the elder apostles. But they went out that they might be made manifest. And you've seen it so many times. Men, they go out and overnight the doctrine starts to change. And it's like, hold on a minute. You're changing this. You've seen it. Nazariah tried fried, tried and fried. Okay. And other individuals as well. But tap. And he starts changing the doctrine. So you really know a man of integrity. Even though he may be kicked out of a group or no, not, not so much a part of a group, he still teaches the right doctrine. That's a form of what? Integrity. Which a lot of men lack. Okay? But they might be, may, may be manifest. So they were made manifest. Okay? That's a strong little pop you got right there. Very just a minute. But verse 20, but you have an unction from the Holy One. So what's an unction? An unction is an anointing. So we have an anointing, we have an unction through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, what does it do? It guides us in that right path. An unction is an anointing. You have an unction with oil and you have an unction with the Holy Spirit. Okay? The same only with me. Okay? An unction is not all things. Okay? And I have not written unto you because you know not the truth. So again, Yahushua has not written that because you know not the truth. He's written it because you know the truth. Okay? You know it. Because if you didn't know it, guess what? He wouldn't have written it unto you. And he gave you the understanding to know the truth. Right? But, because you know it and that no light is of the truth. The truth is 100%. And that's a man of Lord is going to stand upon truth. Lies are going to fail you. Lies don't stand. The scripture says a lie is a foul blot in a man. A lie is a, is a stain in a, within a man's character. That's one thing you learn in this truth. Honesty. Truth. And the truth always defends itself. That's a beautiful thing about truth. And no lies of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denies that Yahweh Shai is Mashiach? So you've got a lot of men. How are they denying Yahweh Shai is Mashiach? Because they're denying the spirit of the scriptures. They're denying his spirit, see? When certain men bring out certain topics, you may be a bit austere because the spirit changes. Sometimes you're a bit more calm, sometimes you're a bit more austere. Men hate that spirit of Yah, they hate the spirit of Yahweh Shai. They despise his spirit. So guess what? That makes you an enemy of Yahweh Shai. Okay? That makes you an enemy of Yahweh Shai. One verse, there we just a minute. One verse 23. Whoso denies the Son, the same have not the Father. So if you deny the Son, the Father. Don't deny the Son. Alright? Let that Father abide in you. So you've got to let the Son abide in you. Let this truth abide in you. Let this truth abide in you. Let this truth abide in you. 
fight in you. Let this truth resonate with you. He has to do. You're okay? But what's the goal? Push this word for the spirit and power of Yahweh by Sham Yahvashai. Alright? You know, push this word. Alright? Bear me just, let me move this out of the way so we can do his thing. Bear me just a minute. Let me move this out of the way so we can do his thing. You know, the scriptures talk about just using the sermon, you know? Bear me just a minute. Stay on, I might just stay on this side, bear me just a minute. Let's move it over a bit. Man, you know, the scripture says, be peaceable with all men. So I'm not gonna kick up a fuss. The guy, if you can't be patient, you know, just move, you know? Scriptures deal with discretion. So that's what we're using. That's a plot of what? Applying wisdom. Okay, applying wisdom. I care about this, okay? But this is what we go through. This is what we go through to push out this word. Okay? So I care about that. The things we go through, the hope for let go through. But the scripture says, we are counted kind of fools for your sake, so. To this world, we're deemed as fools, but so what? I'll be a fool all day long for Yahweh's sake. But guess what? This is pleasing, Lord willing. This is pleasing to Yahweh's Okay? Because the scriptures talk about our offering. And Lord willing, this is an acceptable offering to Yahweh's Alright? I'm, I'm all over the place now. Bear me just a minute. you got to love this. you got to enjoy this. You gotta make Yahweh Shai your everything, your refuge. Okay, everything. Right? Let's go. Bear me just a minute. Let that for there abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. What have we heard from the beginning? The truth which the elder apostles have taught us. And it says, let that dwell in you. A lot of men it doesn't dwell in them. They start changing up the doctrine. Oh, the 12 tribes chart. Oh, Negro. Bro, who told you that? No women in the scripture says it say all Negro. You got the sign right here. Judah, so-called Negroes. Benjamin, so-called West Indians. Levi, seven tribes. Then you got the Northern tribes. Simeon, Zebulon, Ephraim, Manasseh. Okay. 
Gad, Natalie, Usher, Ruben, Isaka, and the, what the Israelite foreigners. This has never been a black thing, but guess what? The Lord, he did not open up your mind. He kept you asleep, okay? He gave you a part of the truth, just a part. He didn't give you all the truth. He just woke you up to know that you were an, you were an Israelite, and that's it. There's many levels to this truth, okay? And heard from the beginning shall remain in you the doctrine that we've been taught. You shall also continue in the sun. So that's how you continue in the sun, Yahushai. By what? By teaching the right doctrine. If you're not teaching the right doctrine, you're not continuing in the sun. You're diverting from the sun. In, and in the Father. And this is the promise that He has promised us, even eternal life. So we have eternal life through the scriptures, but that eternal life comes with teaching the right thing. If you're not teaching the right thing, you're not going to be given, you're not going to be shown eternal life. These things have I written unto you. There was a reason why these things were written. Because in these last days you would have seducers. Concerning them, set to seduce you. Because you're going to have men that what? Break, they may break off from a camp or whatever or go into the world and all of a sudden they'll start teaching away with doctrine that's not in the scriptures start making up stuff that's not there okay they start associating yeah all the tribes have to be in West Africa no a bulk of them we admit I'm in West Africa Judah but you also have Hamites in West Africa as well so remember it's that balance just like with Elam, even in Elam, do you know how much Indians there is, so-called Indians? And you've got a large majority of heathens there, and you've got a large majority of Israelites. But this is for the spiritual man, and the spiritual man is going to what? Grasp this truth. He's not going to be carnal. He's going to be able to grasp the Israelite foreigners, all of them. He ain't going to be scratching his head, are oh, Israelite foreigners? But he looks like a so-called white man. No. This is about the spirit of a man. Not so much about how you look. Because if that was the case, well, you wouldn't know because guess what? There's tears and the scriptures talk about the tears. That he saw what? When he slept with what? The women of our nation. What did that bring forth? Tears. Okay. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. So what was that anointing? The Holy Spirit. And that's what abides in us. So if that anointing abides in us, we're going to teach what was taught through the elder apostles. We're not going to watch it. Very rough topic. And start teaching something else. Okay? Which you have received of him abideth in you. And ye need that not that any man teacheth you. Okay? And the Holy Spirit is a teacher within itself. But you still have men what that you come under. But there comes a time where you may not need another man over you like that in terms of him having to guide you with every little detail is what you become what? Built up in the faith. And that's what Yahweh is looking for, men that are built up in the faith. Men that are exercised in the spirit to be able to push this word with confidence. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things is the truth. And it's the truth, and it's no lie. And even, even as I have taught you, you shall abide in Him. So if you're teaching the right thing, you're abiding in Yahweh Shai. If you're not, you're not abiding in Yahweh Shai. Let's go to Matthew's Baba Kishah. Serving his business. Let's go to Matthew 7. 
service business. Matthew 7. And let's start at 13. Enter ye into the straight gate. So the straight gate is a position of difficulty. So when we cover this truth, we're in positions of difficulty. Because the people of the world, they just, any, any philosophy that comes to them, they just take it in. They don't fully grasp what they're taking in. Right? For wide is the gate and broad is the way. But wide, see, the word gate, it doesn't require any um, discipline. The wide gate doesn't require any discipline. The wide gate, you could do what you want. That's the wide gate. The wide gate doesn't have a standard. The wide gate doesn't have one doctrine. Well, I'm in that wide gate. We are in that wide gate. Right? And broad is the way. The scriptures tell us. Wide is the gate and broad is the way. And many more people, they're in that broad gate. It's only going to lead to what their demise. Right? And many bit, bear me just a minute, and the Broadway leading to destruction. So a different philosophy, anything outside of what the scriptures are saying, that's the broad gate. That's not only the other mice. So in other words, you could be a example, you're a Muslim, you're a Christian, five percenter, that's the broad gate. It's not only to what you're mice. Well what what hair trying to get you in that? That narrow gate. It's a narrow gate is a position of difficulty. So if it's a difficulty for you to teach this word in truth, in the right doctrine, you're in the broad gate. It should be easy for you to teach the right thing. And many there be that go in their acts. Verse 14, because straight is the gate. Straight. What does straight mean? Position of difficulty, distress. When you're in a position of going distress, you're closed in. And Esau uses that tactic in a physical sense. And Yahabashai even uses that. He wants his men to be in what? Straight. When it comes to this doctrine. Straight past it, that position of difficulty. And narrow is the way. So we know narrow is the way. Alright? Which is the entry. Which leadeth unto life. And few there be that findeth it. So it's just only a, there's only going to be a few that truly find it that way that leads to life narrow few there be that find it that's why the scripture says many are called few are chosen so you're going to have many called into this truth many but you're going to have actually only a few that are chosen that's what keeps us humble that's what keeps us what fearing knowing that in itself that keeps us fearing all right. Here it is, verse 15. Beware of false prophets. So, guess what? Don't get it twisted. A man could be calling upon the name of Yahweh Shai and still be a false prophet. Because he ain't teaching you of Yahweh Shai. He's actually, like, he's actually getting you in line to take that chip. That's what, he's, that's what these men are doing. Getting you in line to take that chip. Getting you in line to be complacent. Getting you in line so your, your guard's down. That's what he's doing. Right?
Beware of false prophets. So a false prophet, he ain't going to be warning you of the things that are truly happening. He ain't going to be building up your faith. A false prophet, he ain't going to be building up your faith in these times. He ain't going to be doing that. All right? A false prophet, he ain't going to be building you up. Right? And that's spiritual as well. No, yeah, alright, that's spiritual. That's spiritual. Some a scoffer, a scoffer that just walked past. He's bugged out. He's, he's, he's bugging out. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? Alright, brackety out, brackety out, shy, brackety out, brackety. One guy that walks past that scoffs, he's all twitching. He's all, you know? That's that's the Lord plaguing him. So the Lord's plaguing our enemies. Okay. But well, I want to stick on to the main topic. A false prophet is someone that ain't gonna be teaching the teaching you the truth. How it should be taught. I've always said, especially if you're a camp leader, okay? And if you're a camp leader, it's for you to check the men in your camp to see what they're teaching. Do they still believe in the truth? which the elder apostles have taught. Because you may have one man that may still be a Christian, but claiming to be a man of Lord, but he's still a Christian. You may have another man that he's still into Garveyanism and all that rubbish, the black unconscious community. You may have all these men in your camp. So guess what? That's going to fall. If it's not built up on that rock, it's going to fall. That's a weak foundation. That's a foundation on the sand. The black unconscious community, Christianity, that's a weak foundation. That's not going to stand. But guess what? Everything's going to be revealed in due time. Everything. See, when you lie, <laughs> when you lie, you need to keep covering, covering, covering that lie up. Okay? Covering your right hand man, but you're not going to be able to do that for any longer. Every man's intent is being shown. Who believes, who don't believe? Okay? Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. So, the wolf, he ain't on a, a pair like a wolf. You're not going to know he's a wolf. He's going to be in sheep's clothing. He's going to disguise himself. Just like an agent, he's going to disguise himself. He's going to act like the sheep. So he's going to blend in. Like an agent. Like an agent blends in. Okay. Which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. So this is ravening. And that's what a wolf looks to do. That's why Yahweh shall warn us in what? Matthew 10 and I believe it's 16. Beware I send you forth as sheep amongst Wolves. So that's what we are. We are sheep amongst wolves. Okay, and wolf, what do wolves do? Devour. That's why we gotta be extra circumspect. I always say this. What's going on around you? How men are moving. This man may may have a man that comes here, comes up here, then he may run to another camp. Watch out for all that. Camp hoppers. The Lord tells us to watch out for that. In these last days, the false prophets, and there shall be many of them, and you are going to know them by their fruits, by what they were teaching. They were going to be teaching heresies, false doctrines. Watch out for a man that says, I want to know your opinion. What's your interpretation? That's a heretic. That's someone that don't believe. That's someone that wants you to get out of your bounds. You see? You gotta you got understand how Satan works. Right? Satan wants you to get out of your bounds. Satan wants you to operate off your emotions. How you feel. The doctrine should go. That's why you gotta stick 
spoken the truth, stick to the scriptures. That's our safety barrier. So when someone says, no, I want to know what you feel. No, nope, no, nope. I've got to go by the scriptures. Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is on um, what? Desperately wicked and deceitful. Your own heart. Our own minds. Who can know it? Knowing that the own, our own minds. Because not every thought is a righteous thought. We're going to get wicked thoughts. So how do you balance that out? Through the scriptures. Okay. Shown, and it says they are ravening wolves so they to raving greedy about gain you got some men they're only teaching this word for gain for money oh because Esau says look if you don't teach this we're going to take away your money okay nobody nobody's sticking a wire in my back a battery pack in my back and saying you got to do it this way you got to teach this way don't mention that name don't do this that means you're, you're controlled. That means you're bought and paid for. Okay. The true prophets of the Lord, they're not bought and paid for. The true prophets of the Lord, they will not be bribed. They will not be blackboard. They will not, that will not work with the true man of the Lord. Okay. You see these things going on. And when you see these things, it puts you in that fear of Yahweh even more. More so. Okay. Be very, be, be very circumspect in these times. Let's go to verse 16. You shall know them by their fruits. So you are going to know the righteous, the hopeful elect, and you are going to know the wicked by their fruits, by their doing. What's your fruit? What you're teaching? So if you have a group that just want to link up, you have a group that says, we need to save all Israel. No, that's you trying to do your own thing. Yo, yo, sister, brother, brother, you're in that spirit. Bro, it's the Lord that selects, it's not you. It's not you that selects, that does the selecting process. Yo, you wanna hear me out? Bro, you tie yourself out. If every Israelite was to walk past, have you got time to listen to me? You say that to a couple of people to fill them out, but you can't do that with everyone. See, men are carnal. Remember, it's up to Yahweh Shai. He preaches words, and those that are going to come up and be sealed for deliverance, they're going to come up and be sealed for deliverance. Those that drive past and that are sealed for deliverance, they're sealed for deliverance. You don't need to say, oh, sister, sister, you got a Mormon. You're carnal. You don't really understand what this truth is about. We're not here to gather all Israel on this side. That's why you have a two thirds and one third. Men, women and children. The elect are going to be gathered by this word. Okay. And it's not a black thing. Okay, that's a false prophet. Black. You know? You got to be black. You know? Judah. That's, see, that's that. Men don't really understand what this truth is about. You have 12 tribes. And the 12 tribes, they all look different. They all act different. Okay? They all have what? A different spirit. That's why you have 12 tribes. And guess what? They're not all descended from Negro. Okay? They don't have to be indigenous Negro. That's all rubbish. Okay? That's something you made up in your own mind. But every man's intent is going to be shown in these last days. Who really believes in this truth? Who's actually teaching the truth? So that's Matthew 7. And we're going to go straight to 16. You shall know them by their fruits, their doctrine. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? The answer would be no. Okay. Even so, every good tree bringing forth good fruit. So a good tree, so when you have a camp, and you as an individual, you're looking to bring forth good fruit. You're looking to bring forth acceptable fruit. When, when you plant a tree, you want it to be good fruit, not rotten fruit. Because you can't eat rotten fruit. So you've got men that may have camps, teaching camps, but their fruit is rotten. 
So you can corrupt your fruit because just by what you're teaching. You want fruit that is ripe, nice. All right? And a good tree, every so good tree bring you forth good fruit. So how do you bring good fruit? Through the doctrine. All right? That's how you're bringing forth that good fruit. But to corrupt tree bring you forth evil fruit. So a corrupt tree, a corrupt man that's teaching, if he has men in his camp and he's going off with the doctrine, what's he bringing forth? Corrupt fruit. Unless the men that are under him get away from him and start teaching and wake up to a right. Because that, that happens. You've seen that happen. Men that escape other men in what? They teach the right thing. They stick teaching the right thing. They don't veer away from them. Right? One verse 19. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So a lot of men are going to be reserved for what? Destruction. Because they're not bringing forth what? That fruit. That good fruit. So it's shot it's, it's into the fire. For the bonfire. Reserved for destruction. That's how important it is to teach the right thing. And if you don't know something, you have the humility. There's thousands of videos with the elder apostles going into the breakdowns. So there's no excuse to not know a particular breakdown. Go into the scriptures. And then breakdowns are there. Bear me just a minute. Verse 20, wherefore you buy their fruits, you shall know them. So it says by their fruits, you shall know them. Their fruits. What they're teaching. And even John, what's it? John the Baptist said, bring their forth what? Fruit. Meat for repentance. Okay, perfect. Even John the Baptist said that. Those that are teaching the right thing. Verse 20, wherefore? By the fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, you have a shy, you have a shy, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So that's how this is this is how service is. Okay, but he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven, my Father. So it's about doing the will. So if you're doing the will of Yahweh Shai, if you're doing the will of the Heavenly Father, you're going to be doing the will of Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai is going to give you the 100% truth. Not 50, not 20, not 90, not 99. 99% ain't enough. Well, it won't do. <laughs> okay. It won't do. You need a hundred percent certainty, truth. The truth ain't ninety-nine percent. The truth is certain. The truth is a hundred percent. And we believe we got that through the Spirit, which has been given to us by the elder apostles of Great Millstone. And we believe in that through faith. If you don't believe in that, you need to pray and you need to fast. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, what day? And the day of Yahweh Shai's arrival. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name have done many wonderful works. So they done many wonderful works. We're going to get into it. Then when I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Why? Because the works, it was not in line with what Yahweh was saying. You're teaching a different doctrine. That's, that's, that's not works that are acceptable. That's wicked works. That's why he said, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You do know teaching something that's outside of what the elder apostles have taught, taught us. That's what? Work in iniquity. All right? This is how serious it is. This is how serious this truth is. It's 
excuse me. Very serious about this guy. And that's why the scripture says, defend the gospel. So when you see these different things, men coming out of nowhere with these different, you're supposed to defend it. Not leave it and say, well, we're all Israel. No. You're supposed to defend the truth. Scriptures fight for the truth and to them. And the Lord shall fight for these. So part of fighting for the truth is defending the truth. Right? We're not just going to get together, link up with some camp. We're not going to do that. If a camp is going off, ah, oh, but we're all brothers. We all need to unify. No. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say that. Nowhere in the scriptures does it talk about unifying. Come together. Alright. You know? Yahweh, yeah, is he going to bring the tribes together? Yes, in the kingdom. But right now, that's not meant to happen. So if you're forcing that, it's not according to the word of Yahweh, because you're forcing it. In the kingdom, we all get together. But right now, we can't do that. Because you have men teaching what? Different doctrines. Bear me just a minute. John 10. Okay, this is John 10. And let's start at a lot of men, they didn't come in the right way. Okay, they came in another way. John 10. And this is Yahweh speaking, warning us what to look out for. Okay. Very, very, I say unto you.